Dean Malenko, a legend working for All Elite Wrestling, wrestled as the man of a thousand holds. His now boss could very well be man of a thousand titles. Like CEO, president, co-founder, co-owner, analyst, executive, businessman. I won't go through them all. While building a sports empire. All Elite Wrestling, Fulham FC, Jacksonville Jaguars, True Media Network, and All Elite MMA. Oh wait, wait. All Elite MMA? Okay, maybe in the future. But for now, thank you Tony Khan. What is a week like for Tony Khan? All the companies, all the jobs. Uh, it's always a busy week, uh, especially during football season. Uh, with both clubs in football season right now, it's a really busy time. Um, but I'm always happy to talk to you, Jim. How do you balance the days? Are there certain days, obviously, you're working on one, and then certain days you're working on the other? Yeah, I think you end up doing things uh, from all three businesses in one day pretty often. Um, there's days where it can be more heavy for one compared to the other. I was probably fortunate in some ways in April that we had uh, shut down when we did uh, to, to do uh, you know all the shows at the beginning of April and then shut the company down while we were developing a COVID testing plan and came back and the company's been red hot since May. Um, but in April, it allowed me to do a lot of studying for the NFL draft. And uh, also, uh, there have been times uh, where I've really uh, gotten my sleeves rolled up working with foam for lengthy periods of time on player acquisition. Um, but what, that's what's great about wrestling and our schedule is that uh, typically, unless it's getting close to the quarterly pay-per-views, our, our workload, the show is typically filmed on a Wednesday, and uh, our filming schedule allows me some time around the weekends where uh, really it's a good time to work on football, and then also throughout the week, I'm constantly juggling uh, all three positions, so it's a great question. Um, I don't actually run the Jaguars day-to-day, -day, like I'm not the GF of the Jaguars, whereas at AEW and at Fulham, I am the GM, and I do, you know, negotiate the contracts with the players, and I do build the roster. Um, so it's a little different with AEW and Fulham, where I probably have more responsibility running the club day to day. And even international, because Fulham, obviously, across the pond, with COVID, were you always, even before COVID, were you always doing things virtually? with meetings, or was it a lot more travel? And now with the COVID, has it made the sports business and the sports landscape and landscape in general go, go more toward less travel, which in essence I would think would be a time saver? It's a great question. It's a great question. Um, it has gone more towards virtual meetings, and we were already doing a lot of that. I was already doing a lot of virtual meetings with my scouts and my staff um, when I wasn't able to be in England and vice versa. When I was in England, I would do a lot of virtual meetings and calls with the wrestling team. And uh, thankfully, we were already in a good routine of doing that before COVID became a problem. And now we, we do a lot of them. We have a lot of virtual meetings at Fulham and at AEW. The busiest man in sports, Tony Khan. Have you ever thought about adding MMA to your portfolio? I have not. Uh, I'm friends with Dana White. I really like Dana. And uh, I've never thought about getting into that business. I'm not sure if there's quite the same opportunities in MMA that there were in wrestling. I don't think there was a second major national wrestling promotion. And I thought there was a great opportunity to get into the wrestling business because you had so many great wrestlers who were available to come wrestled for AEW at the beginning of 2019, and we were able to put a really good roster together that we built up and built up, and it's developed so much. I think it's evident in 2020, it's a really different roster than it was uh, when we got started, but the roster we started with was the strongest roster anybody's tried to tr launch a wrestling show with in many, many years. And in MMA, I don't know as much about building that lineup. I don't have... Uh, the same skills, I wouldn't be able to promote a card the same way, and I wouldn't be able to match make the same way. Uh, and it's just not one of my core competencies like wrestling is. So I probably would not rush to get into that business anytime soon, and I would be hesitant uh, to get into that business. 
Did you ever think about becoming a pro wrestler? No. I never thought about becoming a pro wrestler. When I was a kid, I thought about uh, doing exactly what I do now, which is booking a pro wrestling company and, and owning and managing a pro wrestling company, which has always been my dream. Uh, and if I was ever going to be, uh, when I was a kid, if I ever had a dream about doing any kind of on-screen appearances in wrestling, it would have been as a manager. Um, but that was a pretty short-lived dream. But that was the only thing when I was a kid I ever really wanted to do on screen. I don't think I ever at any point in my life ever thought I had what it takes to compete as a wrestler in the ring. <laughs> well, we never say never, obviously, especially in pro wrestling. So we're probably not going to see Tony Khan in a, an AEW ring competing at some point, even in a six-man tag. Is no. that is that fair to say? No. I, mean, I didn't know that was a question. Well, it was Sorry, a statement and no, that's all right. It's a statement and also a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, either way it works. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> hey, we noticed Jake Hager. He's been doing AEW and also Bellator MMA, and it's been a nice working relationship that he has with both companies, and he speaks very highly of both companies. Are you open to more things like that and having MMA stars cross over into pro wrestling? We've seen it. And vice versa, having AEW talent like Jake competing in MMA? Both places. You know, if people have an opportunity outside of wrestling to do something special, I generally am open to it and try to uh, accommodate those whenever possible. So, you know, Jake has worked with Bellator. Yeah, if Jake ever wanted to cross over to the UFC, I would also support that. Um, and if people wanted to play other sports or when people have had film roles, I've always encouraged it and uh, tried to find ways to make it work. Um, so I, I definitely would encourage it if other wrestlers wanted to get into MMA or if Jake wanted to compete elsewhere in MMA. AEW Dynamite is 8 p.m. Wednesdays on TNT. What a spectacular show. Their pay-per-views have been awesome. Full gear from top to bottom. Buy-in, opening match till the end. Just incredible. Shaq! Shaquille O'Neal, who is part of the NBA and TNT, big wrestling fan. He's been a part of WCW Bash of the Beach, WrestleMania. I guess Shaq now is AEW. What does that mean to AEW to have Shaq involved, if that's the case? <laughs> well, well it's, uh, it's preliminary to say that he's involved here. Uh, I, I, I don't want to uh, comment too much on his involvement or put words in his mouth yet, but Jade uh, has alluded to the fact that uh, we might be seeing him make an appearance here. Uh, I really, really like Shaq. I grew up idolizing him. I'm a huge fan of him. And he's a wonderful person. He's a really, really uh, kind person. And he's an inspiring businessman and really, really, really great dude. And I would love to work with him. Uh, he's been here. He's visited us. And uh, whether he will ever appear in a ring, who's to say, but certainly... Uh, Jade has implied that maybe that's something we might see. So, we shall see. You're a busy man, but so is Shaq. Shaq does so many things. It's not just talking basketball. He's a businessman. He's smart. He's very personable. Just an incredible person. Absolutely. Absolutely. He'd be, he would be an amazing person to work with. Uh, I, I really enjoy Shaq a lot. I think uh, the fans you know, really enjoy Shaq. And so, I would, uh, I'd love to see him in AEW. Shaq Dawson. Tony Khan, did you play some basketball at University High School in Urbana, Illinois? I did not. I coached some basketball. What? You coached? You were a coach? Wait, what is this? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I loved uh, basketball. I loved basketball. I coached uh, basketball for many years. And uh, that one where I originally honed my love of sports statistics was coaching basketball and taking stats and um, work, working with players and talking to players. Uh, it's always been something I loved. And uh, so, yeah, the, the basketball and football and wrestling were really taking up most of my life when I was in high school. Well, that's interesting. So did you coach then at the high school level or at the younger age groups? Uh, it was at the high school level, yeah. That's really cool. Tony, did you think, I know you became an owner of these companies and involved in these big businesses, and you're a numbers guy, analytics, but was coaching then something that, hey, maybe someday I want to coach in the NBA or coach in, in the NFL? 
Uh, I wouldn't. I don't. I think I'm done coaching. I think my coaching. I mean, I became a, a literal general manager and uh, went that way instead. So I'm, mean, you know, being the general manager of Fulham and being the general manager of AEW with this roster. So um, yeah, I, uh, my coaching now uh, is more like wrestling coaching, which still is coaching. Uh, and uh, I love working with people. And honestly, uh, once the show is written and uh, we've got. You know, all the segments laid out. I like rolling up my sleeves. I like coaching matches and agenting for people. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And I like putting together scenarios and, and matches. Uh, I miss basketball coaching. It's been a while. Um, and I'll always love that sport. But uh, definitely football, both here in America and in England. And wrestling, it really keeps me very, very busy right now as it is. Well, once COVID breaks, hopefully we get through this and all. Maybe, hey, maybe as a charity fundraiser, we could have an AEW basketball team and play some charity games and do something like that. I remember back in the day. Now, I'm old, Tony. I'm old school. So I remember back in the day, like the Miami Dolphins would have a basketball team in the off season. They would play some charity games and things like that. It was pretty cool. Well, there's, I mean, you're... You're talking to the right guy because I would love that, and uh, I would I would love to see an AEW uh, charity team. And you know, back in the the day with Crockett, uh, the Crockett company did I think have a charity basketball team. I've seen uh, Dusty Rhodes and Sting and Lex Luger playing basketball, uh, I think for charity in the past. So it's, it wouldn't be unprecedented. But um, it's not something I thought much about, to be honest with you. Well, you've got a lot of a lot more things to think about. Hey, what have you learned about AEW, about yourself and the company, just trying to navigate through all this COVID? Uh, you know, it's, I've learned a lot about uh, the kind of people we have here. Uh, we've got great people, uh, and I think everybody hopefully, uh, you know, felt good about the company when we told people you really don't need to come. He's <laughs> very, very much voluntary uh, for everybody since the beginning of the pandemic to come in. And uh, we have not forced anybody to come in to any TV show and any time anybody's felt uncomfortable or not wanted to, to participate, we've let people stay home this entire year and paid them. Um, and I think that it would be uh, true of, to say of this pandemic that another thing I've learned is that desperation can make you make a lot of your best decisions. And uh, there have been people that have been added to the company when we needed to build up the roster because uh, we didn't have a lot of people available that have really come in and done well for us. I've had to put together shows where less than, well, I mean, exactly 29%, I was about to say less than 30% of the roster was available, but I think it was exactly 29% of the roster was available in the month of April. And it was fun putting those shows together and then quickly had to scramble to get the double or nothing card uh, assembled and, and making sense on television very quickly and I'm really proud of how quickly all that stuff came together and how good that card was and uh, we've really never looked back since uh, we came back to Daly's place on May 6th so we've been running over six months now you know in Daly's outdoor shows um, with regular COVID testing for everybody and it's gone really really well I, I've learned that I have a great group of people which I already kind of knew um, and I hope they've learned about AEW that, you know, it's not all talk, you know, really shown to a lot of people through this pandemic that we will support them and that not forcing anybody to come in here uh, if they're not comfortable and also trying to show everybody that we have a great testing plan. And that's why we've had uh, great success keeping people safe here. Well, when Tony, when COVID did first hit and just seeing you all navigate through all of it and continue to do what you've been able to do. It's been really been great for the fans, also just for everybody going through COVID to see that we still can do some things. When it first hit, how difficult though was it, especially for a startup company? Maybe not so much for the Jaguars of Fulham because they've been established, but here you have a startup company and you're trying to get everything off the ground and then all of a sudden, whoa, were those anxious moments? Were those just challenging, tough moments to deal with? Well, how do you mean? Like uh, when it first hit? Just when it first hit, and you have this startup company AW, and now you got to start to change things. And are we going to be able to run a show next week? Challenging for everybody, Tim. I mean, for I, I, I think for us, 
probably less so than a lot of people out there where it's presented uh, real challenges and, and there are people out there trying to think about how they're going to feed their families. And, and uh, I, For us, it hasn't been nearly that kind of a situation for me. Um, I've been very desperate to make the show high quality from the beginning, and it's obviously made it more challenging without our greatest asset, which is our fans, and without having uh, that resource, which is the greatest resource of all, the live audience and the energy they bring to our show and the love they have for our, our wrestling company and our wrestlers. Uh, it, it's been challenging. Slowly they've been coming back here in Jacksonville uh, where we've had some fan support and it's been really great uh, but we're doing it very safely. Uh, you know, from the beginning it's been it's, it's been challenging, sure, but I think uh, I look back at uh, the first weekend of this pandemic when I really rolled up the sleeves and tried to come up with ideas that would make us a functional wrestling show for as long as we weren't able to operate with fans, like, you know, putting the baby faces and heels around the ring as uh, effectively as an audience that we could use uh, that would be here and that would be tested, that we always have access to, even if there are no fans able to come. And, um, you know, uh, just building plans for the spring and summer was challenging with a, a limited percentage of the roster and uh, you have to change stories quickly but you have to make them make sense and that's something I've always really enjoyed uh, on paper as a wrestling writer is creating challenging circumstances and uh, making your story fit them and this was no exception to that. Uh, so it was very challenging and I think we're proud of how we responded to some of it but I also think uh, you know it's pales in comparison to what a lot of people have had to deal with. So um, uh, it's, it's a sad situation in so many ways, the pandemic. And uh, I think the wrestling is a very, 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 very small part of it. But, um, but on the other hand, it's affected everything we do for the last, uh, I guess, eight months. So, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge it. But on the other hand, I think its impact in wrestling is probably a lot less than its impact in other places. That is so true. It's interesting in a sense that Tony Khan you built this AEW with Cody Rhodes and so many others. And I'm wondering, because you were such a big fan, how did you navigate Tony Khan the fan from Tony Khan the business person? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I am a fan of wrestling, but once, like, uh, once you get into starting the business, I really stopped being a fan. Um, you know, it's the same thing. In sports, you know, you can't really be a fan of players uh, when you're in the business. And so I'm friends with a lot of people, and uh, I admire a lot of people, but I think the fandom part, uh, you switch off pretty quickly. I mean, I'll always be a fan, and I think that's why uh, um, I love wrestling, and I think it shows, and when I write the shows, I try to uh, make it uh, as wrestling-centric as possible and try not to do things that would insult the wrestling viewer. And I... Whenever I get the suggestion from anybody in wrestling uh, for something that's like a finish I don't like because I think it insults the viewer or doesn't give a satisfying conclusion to the match or just creative idea that I don't think really uh, is consistent with wrestling, you know, I've tried to uh, do away uh, with uh, some of the tropes in wrestling that uh, make it, you know, <laughs> that have caused uh, people to insult wrestling fans so many years and have uh, caused a lot of wrestling fans to walk away from watching wrestling. So um, I love wrestling, but I stopped considering myself a fan when I started putting this business plan together um, because no matter how much I admire somebody, uh, you know, you can't overpay. Uh, I, I really try not to ever underpay people. I think we do a really good job compensating people and we're really fair and I've always tried to do that uh, with everybody. Uh, whether it's at AEW or at Fall. And uh, I always try to be honest with people, too. Uh, when, I, when I started AEW, I came into it with a nickname that my players had given me, which is the most honest man in football. And uh, I try to bring it over to wrestling, too. I'm always honest with people. Uh, I probably sometimes do a detriment, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, it's not a fandom issue anymore. 
once you start a business, you have to start thinking like a businessman. And obviously you know that from the businesses you started and been involved in. And it's just an interesting journey so far for you. And I'm wondering, because of the different companies that you're involved with, I would think, hey, look, it's always important to make the right hires. But I would think whether it's AEW or whatever, making the right hires is so ultra important when you have more than one company. What has it been like for you and your teams and the people that you have working with you and the successes that you've been able to build? Uh, we have a great team around us. And it's great having everybody back together. Um, you know, it was, it was challenging because we're spread out all over the country. So some of our key people, uh, some of the key executives and some of the key wrestlers in this company weren't really available in the beginning of the pandemic, as we alluded to. Uh, but for about six months or so, everybody's been back together and we've been uh, in full gear, no pun intended, and uh, going all out, no pun intended. So both those <laughs> puns were totally intended. Uh, and... Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun like the last six months. Uh, I am, am really really pleased with the hires I made in terms of staff. I'm really pleased in terms of the hires in terms of wrestlers. Uh, we have a great executive team. The EVPs are great. Uh, Matt and Nick Jackson, Cody and Kenny Omega are tremendous people to work with. Uh, you know, I, I love them all as wrestlers, I love them all as performers, and they're great people, and they all bring a very different perspective, and uh, I think they all have great ideas, and I try and use the best ideas from everyone, and uh, also I talk to uh, everybody on the wrestling roster, for the most part, about what they want to do, and what they think are good ideas, and you can't do them all. I mean, if every, if you did everybody's ideas, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, we would, we would have like a 27-hour TV show where uh, nobody would lose. So it would uh, <laughs> challenge you to do every, everything everybody wants to do. Um, but I do think uh, I try to keep an open door. And, and if people have really cool ideas, I will check them out. And a lot of times even take a, a piece of it and say, you know, I can't do that whole thing, but maybe there's something here we could do. Or that, you know, that's an interesting idea. I can't do that this week, but maybe down the line I could look at that. Um, or even uh, just take a, a, a twist on it and say, you know, I wouldn't do that, but I would do this. And, and there's a piece of that that makes sense, but I would do something completely different with the rest of it. So um, I like doing that. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I think it makes sense uh, to have somebody that, uh, you know, knows what everybody's working on that can say, like, you know, that's an interesting idea, but it's very close to something that, Matt Hardy was just thinking about, or, uh, you know, it's a great idea, but it's very, very similar to something that Taz and I are doing. Um, so I think, uh, for me, uh, I love the people I work with and I'm always interested in, uh, developing and finding the best talent. But for us right now, I think we're in a good place. We have a great executive team and we have a great wrestling roster and we don't need to go out and, uh, try and add a, a ton and now I'm at a place where people I add, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably either feeling very strongly about them in terms of their development, or it could also be a big star coming in. And uh, as far as just filling spots in the roster, we're way past the point where we need to do that. And uh, so roster additions now will truly really be additive. They will, and uh, I'm excited uh, about the group we have, but definitely... I'm glad you asked because I'm, I think our, our, we have great people here. And uh, as we're coming to the year, end of the year, it's been a hard year. And uh, I'm just really grateful to all of them. Well, a couple more questions. And I, I got to echo because fans are excited about AEW and still excited about AEW. And that is like number one for me. <laughs> I'm not in the business side, but you the business side or not, that is just so important, especially with pro wrestling. And AEW Dark which I love. Give an opportunity to indie wrestlers, Tuesdays, 7 p.m. on AEW's YouTube channel. Talk a little bit about AEW Dark, because I just think it is just so incredible and thankful of AEW and you all and you for doing that. Well, Dark has changed a lot in 2020. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we would do a few matches, and we would tape them uh, before and after the Dynamite shows. And uh, when COVID hit, 
we change the way we tape our television. We still do live TV shows on Wednesday night on TNT, but we also tape a lot more matches before and after a Dynamite now. And it started early in the pandemic. Um, I didn't have any fans, and I wanted to bring in lots of people uh, to, re- first of all, to be able to develop more wrestlers, but also uh, so we had fans at ringside. And I'm bringing these people in, and it's like, well, I'd like to take a look at these people and get them in matches and really build up a developmental system uh, where you know we're, we're taking a look at all these indie wrestlers and also giving them a chance to work in the pandemic, which is something I felt really good about because, you know, through March, April, May, June, it's like, gosh, the pandemic's just slapped everybody in the face and independent wrestling had become a non-entity. So for a lot of people, their best chance to work in the wrestling business, if they weren't signed anywhere, was to come work on Dark, which was great. And we found some really valuable people in AEW through this program. And so it's our developmental system. And, uh, we continue to develop wrestlers, and we'll, we'll, we'll have more new talent in uh, this Wednesday, and I'm sure we'll uh, find some more people that we have interest in. And it's, it's really fun, and I think it's great for the fans to see the next generation of big wrestlers, but also to see some of the top stars in AEW getting a chance uh, to develop their moveset, getting a chance to uh, develop their stories. And um, we've got great commentary with Excalibur and Taz, and we have guest hosts. Ricky Starks is uh, kind of the permanent guest host. Uh, and uh, then we have other people who have come in and done a great job, like Beta Scott and Anthony Gogo and others. And um, I love the show. I love um, that we've found a lot of people that have come in and contributed to AEW. Uh, it's a, it, there's some great stories out of Dark. And Will Hobbs is a great example of somebody who I've worked with on Dark. And um, I decided, okay, well, I'm going to put him on Dynamite, and then I actually agented his match with Darby uh, on the Saturday Night Dynamite, and he did a great job, and I really like Will, and I decided I'm going to sign him and push him. And then we had the all-out battle royal right after that. He was I agented that, too, and Will was a guy I earmarked for a big push. And uh, so he's a good example of somebody who came in to work on Dark and has gotten to do a lot more things and has become a, a contract wrestler here. So it's a great opportunity for people to come in and make an impression on my, on, on everybody here, but especially me. And uh, that's the best way to get the contract. So uh, I definitely think uh, it's a fun show for the fans. It's become a really, really fun show to put together. And it's uh, very, very beneficial for us to have this ability uh, on the same day we tape Dynamite, you know, we're filming Dynamite Live for TNT, and then we're also uh, taping all these matches with all this young talent. It, it's a great setup for us. And you mentioned Will Hobbs, and I'm going to mention Red Velvet, another opportunity which is great. And the commentary, like you said, the commentary I love because it's so laid back, and they have fun with it, and it's just, just go with it. Just talk, call the match, but also add some color to it, add some humor. Just do that. It's such a free, freestyle way of doing it. It makes that commentary makes it even brings it to another level, which is fun and enjoyable. Okay, last question. We're gonna get Tony Khan out of here. Hey, University of Illinois finance graduate. He also is just doing so many incredible things in AEW and the sports world. But here's the last question, Tony, and it's always the toughest. So I'm I'm ending it with a tough question, Tony. Does Tony Khan like to cook, and has he been on a shot of brandy yet? I do not like to cook. I don't know how. It's not that I don't like to. I don't know how to cook. And I have been on a shot of brandy. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you can see it on, uh, on the YouTube page. And she, uh, she was a great host. And uh, we uh, had some steak that Brandy made and also uh, some tequila she bought. It was a great time. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Mr. Tony Khan. AW Dark, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesdays on AW's YouTube channel. AW Dynamite, 8 p.m. Wednesdays on TNT. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Jim. Well, I've got a big card on Dynamite uh, this Wednesday, so I'm, uh, I'm excited. And uh, there's some huge stuff coming up on Dynamite the next uh, several weeks and into 2021. I, I think the shows the rest of 2020 are going to be outstanding. So uh, I would strongly encourage wrestling fans to please check out Dynamite the next several weeks. Dynamite!
Dynamite's ready to explode. Thank you, Tony Khan.